On the 10th of March 2021, the Enlarged Board of Appeal of the European Patent Office handed down its decision G1 of 19, which is about the patentability of computer-implemented simulations. Now that the dust has settled, we would like to provide you with a more thorough analysis of that decision. My name is Christoph Karl, and I'm here with my partner, Patrick Heckeler. At the heart of the matter was the question whether a simulation as such can be patented. A simulation as such is characterized by a claim that is directed to the mere performance of a simulation without specifying how the output of the simulation is used. So, Patrick, can a simulation as such be patented at the EPO? Yes, it can. However, only under specific circumstances. According to G1 of 19, if the output of a simulation is intrinsically technical, then the simulation can be patented. For example, if uh, a nuclear reactor is simulated to find out the optimal thickness of a wall that surrounds the reactor, then the output of such a simulation can only be reasonably used in technical contexts. In this case, your claim can be directed to, for example, testing the wall by that simulation without specifying that the wall is actually used in a nuclear reactor. Furthermore, a simulation can be patented if it is adapted to the internal functioning of the computer on which it is executed. Other criteria, as for example mentioned in the amicus briefs, were found to be not sufficient. That's right. In particular, it is not sufficient that the simulated system is technical. For example, there is a decision circuit simulation of the year 2006 where an algorithm for producing pink noise is applied to an electrical circuit that is affected by the noise. In that decision, the Board of Appeal found that the simulation as such is sufficiently technical and patentable. Well, that decision, according to the new G decision, is no good law any longer. It would also not be sufficient that the simulation is simply better. For example, you come up with a new model of simulating weather conditions, and that new model allows you to reliably predict uh, the weather not only for five days, but for 10 days. That would not uh, put you in a position, though, to claim the simulation as such. What wouldn't help you either is to argue that your novel computer simulation avoids physical simulation as practiced in the prior art. For example, if you can now do without an actual model of a car that is tested in a wind channel, that might save you millions, but it wouldn't be good enough to get a claim directed to the simulation as such in the European Patent Office. Finally, it is not sufficient to argue that for coming up with the novel computer-implemented simulation, technical considerations were necessary to better understand the simulated system. So, Patrick, in such a case where the EPO won't give you a claim directed at the simulation as such, you as a patent attorney, what do you tell your clients? Well, a first option is to mention steps in the claim wording that further define how the output of your simulation is used. As an example, think of a simulation that aims at improving a product like a rollover bar with improved stability or a steel beam with improved load capacities. In these cases, the steps of manufacturing the product have to be mentioned in the claim wording. You may also limit the claim to the technical use of the output. Let's assume we have a weather forecast simulation, as you already mentioned. You may then, for example, claim a cat flap that is controlled by the output of such a simulation, which allows a cat to leave an apartment only if rain is unlikely in the next few hours. However, the question arises whether the presentation of the output of a simulation on a display is already sufficiently technical. What do you think, Christoph? Well, it's unlikely that the simple presentation of the outcome of the simulation on the screen is 
enough to solve a technical problem. If you take the example of the weather forecast again, and you present uh, the weather forecast in your weather app, that's probably just considered to be presentation of information and therefore not technical by the EPO. But the case gets a little bit more tricky if you feed these data in real time into a rain radar app, which produces a film that presents to the user quite detailed how clouds and rain will move on a map in the next 48 hours. Another example actually addressed by the G-Decision is the simulation of a movement of a billiard ball, which is then used in a computer game, presumably for presenting the movement on the screen. The G-Decision seems to have doubts whether such a use produces a technical effect. But I would argue that in many cases we get patents on how to more realistically render a 3D object on the screen. If that is technical, why not the use of a simulation to more realistically present the movement of how the ball bounces back from the bank? Going a little bit beyond just simulations, are there any insights that the decision provides on the patentability of computer-implemented inventions in general? First of all, the claimed subject matter always has to solve a technical problem. This means that the COMBIC approach has to be used for all kinds of computer-implemented inventions for assessing inventive step. Therefore, only those features that contribute to the solution of a technical problem can be considered for this assessment. Therefore, computer-implemented simulations don't have a special status. Yes, but surprisingly non-technical features can contribute to the solution of a technical problem. The case underlying this G-decision was about the optimization of a building by simulating how pedestrians move through the building. The G-decision makes it quite clear that simulation can contribute to the solution of a technical problem, even if it reflects such non-technical aspects as human behavior, which in this case were modeled by game theory. This finding could provide applicants with ammunition for arguing that their non-technical features should be considered in many cases beyond simulations. If you want to stay up to date regarding the EPO's case law dealing with uh, computer-implemented inventions, visit our knowledge base europeansoftwarepatents.com. Every Tuesday we summarize a decision of the EPO's Boards of Appeal dealing with technicality. Thanks for watching.